Now, among the various foreign bigwigs attending Margaret Thatcher's funeral today was the Prime Minister of Italy, Mario Monti. Mr Monti got given the job when Silvio Berlusconi left to spend more time with his lawyers. Mr Monti is one of the grand old men of the European political class and therefore you might expect him to be pretty cool on Mrs T. He isn't, though. I hooked up with him after the funeral. Prime Minister, what was it that you admired about Mrs Thatcher? Um, clarity of vision, sometimes oversimplified, but a political leader needs that oversimplification. Uh, stern determination. That's about it, but it's a lot. I've heard you sometimes described as Italy's Thatcher. Well, Do you recognize the characterization? To some modest extent, uh, yes, because, uh, well, I have always been convinced and I tried to practice now in government for one and a half years that some principles of the Thatcher model of governance were, were good. For example, uh, not to allow too much room for corporatism. What do you think you most learned from her? the space to be given or to be created for well-functioning markets, uh, which means uh, the containment of uh, oligopolistic powers of both the unions and business, and the notion that that market needs to be as wide as possible. Now, Mrs. Thatcher, of course, is not credited uh, with having been uh, a strong supporter of European integration, and I have many criticisms to her in that respect, but she was the biggest promoter of one key thing of European integration, that is the single market. Wasn't she right about the, the limits of national feeling that uh, we don't live in a Europe where there is a feeling common among all the peoples of Europe that there is a desire for a European state, that they, people feel an identification with their own country and it'll be a very, very long time before they feel an identification with a bigger political entity. One must be cautious because if that is the criterion, what uh, just simply what people want in terms of geographical identification, not at uh, Margaret Thatcher's times but now, in many of our countries, people would like to have a sub-national identification, uh, regional or, you know, uh, uh, populistic localism is on the increase and sh should we accommodate for that uh, and, uh, and uh, in fact, a, a com accompany a process of actual European disintegration? I'm not sure. But in her analysis, this sense of where people feel they belong was at odds with the, the scheme, the great conception that most of the European political class had. That was, the, that was one of the key things that her analysis stood upon. And in that respect, you were on the opposite side of the fence to her, weren't you? Yes, many, many dis European distinguished politicians were uh, opposite to her. Actually, I've always been uh, eccentric in policy thinking in Europe because I am deeply pro-integrationist, but uh, uh, giving uh, huge emphasis to the market integration, to the single market, less to other aspects. So for example, this is uh, very recent, one year ago. Um, there were debates in the European Council on uh, what to make of the single market in terms of a, uh, an instrument for growth in Europe. And uh, I can say that David Cameron and I were the two consistently uh, stronger advocates of, of achieving more single market in Europe. And when you look the, at... This the... is not necessarily... A French attitude, for example. And when you heard her anxieties about the power of a reunited Germany and its geographical position in the centre of Europe and its now enormous economic power, do you share any of those worries? To some extent, 
And that is why, as an Italian, as a continental European, I always thought it would be good to have Britain firmly and solidly within the European construction, which uh, needs uh, a balance of, of, of powers, not uh, an excess of powers by anybody. Do you think she was right to worry about the position and influence of a powerful Germany? Yes, but uh, that was a bit, in my view, of a retrenchment attitude because if Britain, f since her times and then subsequently, would have been able to really be at the core of Europe, we wouldn't have seen that, uh, um, that uh, asymmetric uh, um, increase of powers, of power of Germany. From where you sit, looking at Britain now um, and looking at the Eurozone, do you foresee a day when Britain might be in the Eurozone? Um, it uh, it's doesn't, doesn't look to be imminent. <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> Prime Minister, thank you very much.